Everybody knows somebody who plays a lot of video games, and if you're watching this video, then it's probably you. I mean, come on, this is a gaming channel. Addiction is no laughing matter, and in most cases, it is horrible. But sometimes it can be just strange, and in other cases, it can cause people to take rather drastic measures. Video games are obviously not as addictive as drugs, but studies have shown that very small percentages of people do exhibit the same effects of withdrawal from video games as other addictions. They're probably not hot and cold on a bed, but they're definitely jonesing for their video game fix. Addiction has undoubtedly changed a lot across the world, but video game addiction is having its own impact that's only being discovered in our time. So without further delay, this is Top 5 Ways Addiction Has Changed the Video Game World. British PM vs Space Invaders Let's start way back in 1981. Space Invaders had been on the scene for a while now, and British PM George Foulkes didn't really enjoy it. In fact, he saw kids becoming more and more enticed with the game, which in his mind made him fester with concern for kids. In 1981, he proposed before the House of Commons a bill that would ban Space Invaders and all other electronic games from public spaces without a license. He stated anecdotal evidence for his claim, stating kids were becoming mischievous thieves in order to get their gaming fix. This was ultimately turned down, but the fact that the guy wanted to push legislation to pretty much put an all-out ban on video games is ridiculous. And it is Space Invaders, he's probably just mad he couldn't hit the last guy. China's Internet Gaming Restrictions With a couple billion people in your entire country, obviously a lot of them are going to be gamers, and a percentage of those might have an unhealthy obsession with their console or PC. But China has taken it to a whole new level, putting a country-wide restriction on gamers' playing time. Every game in China must be programmed with special mechanics to abide to these restrictions. For starters, turning your game on will require you to enter the equivalent of your social insurance number, and after that you only get a limited amount of time to play. Points from normal players slash in half after 3 hours, and all earnings are erased after gamers reach the 5 hour mark. I can see why people don't want to see WoW players missing work and other obligations due to gaming, but a countrywide restriction is a little overkill to handle an issue like this. Runaway turns tragic. In Ontario, Canada, a teen boy named Brandon Crisp ran away from his parents' home when they took away his Xbox. His parents and friends said that he was addicted to his Xbox and the game Call of Duty. While his parents assumed that he would return in a few hours or even the next day, weeks went by before they saw Brandon again. A police investigation ruled out the possibility Brandon could be staying with a friend, and an all-out search of the area was ordered. Brandon was found three weeks later in a heavily wooded area by two hunters, dead. Circumstances of his death were unknown, but determined to be natural, as it was almost November with temperatures well below zero before the body was found. This tragic story is a reminder that your life is not worth putting at risk for a video game. Gaming Heroin In Australia, one family came to the shocking and weird discovery that their teen son hadn't been in school for over three weeks. When confronted, the teen confessed that he'd been dressing in uniform every morning and waiting for his mother to leave for work, at which point he'd skip school and stay home all day playing RuneScape. The game had become an obsession for him, not going to school, barely interacting with the family and getting little to no sleep. The teen's parents described the addiction as that of a heroin user. He wasn't shooting up and getting high, but some of the same collateral damage effect happens when he becomes dissocial and unwilling to pick up old interests. He just didn't care anything for RuneScape. Addicted Gamer Sues Game Developer An addicted gamer suing a developer for being negligent to the fact that their game is addictive is pretty ridiculous until you remember McDonald's has been sued for making people fat and Tim Hortons has been sued for having hot coffee. Well in 2009 this happened. Craig Smallwood sued the makers of Lineage 2 and Seasoft on the grounds that he had no idea that this game would be so addicting. He claimed to have logged over 20,000 hours on the game between 2004 and 2009 also stating that he became psychologically dependent and addicted to playing. NCSoft quickly banned him from the servers, presumably putting an end to his addiction, but not for the reason you might think. Upon further research, they found he was a black marketeer of Lineage 2 Online. He would farm characters and gold and sell them for real-life currency on black markets, a practice frowned upon by most online games. Craig was banned and the case never ended up going to court. But I can only presume he was attempting to get an hourly rate for his 20,000 hours. What a jackass. Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, then maybe give us a like or subscribe. It really helps our channel grow. You can always find us on Twitter and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time, guys.